Hi everyone, this is Steph Parasha, Divine Light, coming out to you from New Zealand, Aotearoa, um, bringing you a energy update. I'm um, just tapped into the energies for light workers and twin flames who are on this path. And I have got a little bit of a message for you I've, to share. I've written it, some of it down. I hope you're all doing well out there. As we lead into Christmas, definitely things are... Um, yeah, they're coming on strong, the feelings are coming in. So as always, what are we doing in our area? So the really strong message for this video today is that this is a time of actually doing quite a lot of hard work. So I know that I've done videos from time to time on the work of the path of a twin flame. And they haven't always been the most popular ones. Um, it is often a little bit of a reality check, a bit of a push a bit of a kind of poke a bit of a telling off I guess you could say in many ways to ourselves and from the universe um, <clears throat> so of course my videos aren't always going to be about rainbows and Christmas trees and fairy lights and um, I often even though my name is divine light my role I feel often is to shine the divine light on things that are maybe hidden or under the surface that we might need to just look at to heal and process and work through. <clears throat> this inner work, um, this is a really big part of the twin flame journey and often when things get tough and when things don't look to be going our way, that is really the time to come back in and, and reflect. Again, the twin flame path is all about magnetism of the polarized opposite energies. That is what we're working on. We're working on becoming a union but what we didn't realize was that mo part of that union process to come into full union with our beloved person, that energy is has to occur within ourselves first. And so we have realized as we've gone along that we've got these missing parts, these wounds and these things that we're needing, thoughts that are going on, behaviors that we're doing that are not of, in our highest state of energy. And for the twin flame in a uh, union to occur, everybody, both both partners, need to be in a in a pure, higher energy. So the twin flame journey is very much about the energies that we are holding within ourselves. I put on last video a little picture that showed the different energy frequencies of how we progress from some of the lower forms of human feelings which is shame and guilt and then we progress further up and we go through those different energies and, and we increase and um, raise our frequency and our vibration that's what people talk about when they talk about the energies and so often as these astrology astrological kind of portals and doorways come in and eclipses come in for us to get a little bit of a closer look at what we may need to be healing on the inside and getting in down into those really kind of thoughts, those collective thoughts that become belief patterns, that become ways of being in our society that are really out of balance, that are not within the energy of love. So as we can see what's happening on our planet, we're all interconnected, we work together as a bigger team, we're all a big network of energy. And what we're trying to do as light workers and twin flames is raise the energy. And where do we have to start with that? We always have to be honourable and start with ourselves because it's really easy to look outside and blame what's happening outside of ourselves and use that as a reason why things are the way they are and they have been for so long. And that's fine for a period of time because there's been a lot of hurt and people have hurt us and situations have hurt us and things have happened and there's been injustices and there's been things that have been wrong that have happened to us that shouldn't have happened to us, but they did. They happened to our forefathers, they happened to our ancestors. Sometimes we're holding on to those pains and those wounds and that's what uh, we talk about when we talk about collective. We talk about karma. Karma is literally unresolved emotional pain that we carry down from generation to generation. And we know that since the Gen Xs came along, the indigo children of the 1970s, the 80s, a little bit into the 60s, I think that was another wave of light workers that came in to shake things up a bit and, and try and realize what's happening. And as we are awakening into this, we're seeing that there's been a lot of abuse. We're shining the light on abuse within families, 
uh, we're shining the light on narcissistic abuse, that dynamic of the personality disordered, undiagnosed, mentally unwell parent, the alcoholic parent that we were raised by, uh, that came from partially their own trauma and wounding of having to also be uh, brought up with maybe those type of parents. So we're looking into those family ancestral lines. Each of the twins has brought in a portion of this into their DNA and we've brought it up for healing. Some of your twin flames may be doing that currently with another partner. Think yourself lucky that that is the case because if you're doing it with him, it will be really hard. So, sorry, him or her or whoever. And when I talk gender, uh, I, I don't mean to stereotype using that, that term male, female, she, her. I know that pronouns are another really important uh, part of our lives to acknowledge at the moment. And I really, truly feel really uh, em just a lot of empathy and love for our non-binary, uh, gender fluid, transgender, LGBT QIA, queer, rainbow community people. Um, I just really feel at this time you guys have got a really big job to do around this area of bringing us together in unity. But I think that for a lot of us, a lot of us are still learning self-acceptance and self-love. And that is really important for whatever we're doing. So I will get to that too because I'm going to do a little bit of a second part within this video on the, the kind of tools that can help us in these times as we are going through our inner work, our inner process, where we're really looking into uh, dismantling thoughts and we're looking at the connection between thoughts and emotions and that interface. So that inner work is we start with in ourselves there. So we look at what are some of the thoughts that are going on in my head? Have a look at yourself. I mean, this spending an equal amount of time looking and doing the inner work and spending an equal amount of time outside yourself helping others and being part of a community and looking and doing your goals outside of yourself is also important. This is just a part of it. Okay, so we're not getting lost in this. We're just allowing ourselves a little bit of time, maybe on the weekend, one hour or so, to sit with yourself and really just go a little bit deeper inside and see what kind of thoughts you're running. So for me, I'm just going to give you an example so you to help you understand. So my example that my head runs is, you're lazy, okay? And this is an inner critic. This is my parent that I grew up with. Both of my parents like to call me lazy. So that's interesting because when I actually did another column on my piece of paper, because when I process this, these kind of emotions and these feelings and these thoughts, I do another side, which is actually the reality. So I challenge back that thought. So I wrote down at the time when they, when I really remember them calling me lazy was around the time when I was a teenager. So I see there that when I was a teenager, I used to study pretty hard. I remember going to school and being a good student and getting good grades. And then I would go off to work. When I was about 15, I started working. Actually, I started working when I was about 10 years old, officially, like in a dairy. Uh, which is another word for like a corner store. And yeah, so that I grew up working. So I always worked. So I'm kind of thinking, I wonder why they thought that I was lazy. <laughs> and then I actually felt in myself the reality was also I never really got a break. I always was kind of getting put upon to do this, that and the other and other jobs for my family, for my mum, but yet I was made to feel lazy, maybe if I just sat down for a moment, or just didn't wake up on time, or and if I did, didn't do the things that she needed me to do, well, you can imagine what for there was, I was such a mother. So, and the reality was I actually was a hard worker, and I actually also went far in my academic career, I actually got a degree, and I held down quite good jobs in the end I did I've held down two managerial roles and um, I've led, also led a really unconventional life and when I look back on the energy of this energy of being told that I was lazy I realized it was part of that scapegoat energy that a family has where they're actually jealous because I am a strong person and I'll yeah, but even though sometimes I don't feel strong in myself, I know in their eyes I am actually quite strong and I speak my mind and I don't kind of tr seem as though I let their shit get to me, but, you know, it kind of does, but hey. Um, so what I was being told there 
was, you know, just sitting there and doing some of that work, you know, to see, to challenge where those inner, that inner critic has come from. Because we have got a lot of thoughts inside our head that have been passed down, that we repeat, that are not self-affirming um, thoughts. So remembering, I mean, these are some of the basics of healing, but sometimes some of us aren't even getting the time and that's the thing when we live in these busy worlds because that's the whole idea of being told you're lazy because then you have to stay busy so you don't have time to question things and you become like a bit of a robot under this kind of whole, you know, and I've always had a challenge around that too and always wanted to live an unconventional life and not feel that I was part of some machine, bigger system, you know. And anyway, so that kind of person to my family is, is quite a threatening person. So I can see why they use that to kind of keep me down. So just have a look in your life where you might have a thought that's quite a predominant one that runs for you and it doesn't make you feel good. It makes you feel anxious, maybe guilty, maybe ashamed. Um, it's one that you feel that you kind of believe about yourself. I want you to try and challenge that belief and just do that exercise and see how you go with that. So this video, this message is also comes with some really good practical suggestions of how to get through this work, how to get through those emotions. Because what I'm also seeing really, <clears throat> excuse me, strongly is that we're having a bit of a battle between our thoughts and our feelings right now. Because you've got to see there with that example, the laziness made me feel, as well as the thought was there, feel like shit, basically. Obviously, you feel like shit. Somebody's telling you you're lazy, you feel so like shit. I can't even, there's probably lots of words, but for me, it feels like shit. So at the, we've got to understand those feelings that come with being talked to like that. We often couldn't process them at the time. We feel them. They, they go in. It kind of becomes a, a lump of energy that often we don't, aren't able to deal with. We don't know how to deal with it at the time. We're kind of angry. We feel it's wrong, but we also feel put down and shamed and put down. So that's kind of a lower self-esteem thing to be told right so it makes you feel no good so your energy is gone okay later on you start to feel like you want to change that it starts to come back you start to feel angry you start to feel where that energy is being held in your body where you probably need to release it where you need to do the work and now it's a relationship between the thoughts and the feelings so we're really at this time being encouraged to see the relationship between our thoughts and our feelings and how that is how it becomes behavior. So noticing that connection. Okay, noticing that connection. We're going to try and break one of those connections. The thought, the feeling, or the behavior. This is basic. When I'm talking about this, I realize this is basic CBT. Um, so that's great how I got this from spirit. And I hadn't yet made the connection as they were telling me this to my actual academic brain. So even that in itself was kind of like a little mini union. So what they're saying is that the union for Twin Flames, so they really focus on the word union. Yes, that's great. Um, but what we need to remember is that first union takes place within your own self, within your two-sided polarities that you have in, every, in lots of different ways where you've gone out of balance with certain experiences that have created certain thoughts, feelings. So in this case, for me, the union would be between that part of me that's telling myself, you're lazy and making and shaming me, that kind of part of me that's in there, that's embedded in me, that was actually what I was told, so I should believe that, that becomes a belief, against my feelings, which were, oh my God, I'm so tired and I, f I just know that I need to rest, I know that I need to do this you know, meditation and take care of myself and checking in with myself. Why do I always feel like I need to be doing something, like I need to be justifying my existence and I need to give myself that permission to rest. So these parts of me fighting with each other kind of thing and coming into the union, being understanding and giving healing to that part of me that feels wounded. So this is where the, the emotions are seen more the com the compassion that we need to give ourselves, the caring that we need to give ourselves. That's how it's healed. That's how it's integrated. And where does that come from? The emotions are really, really very much a divine feminine energy. The energy of self-love, the energy of compassion. We haven't had enough of this. So that's where we've been out of balance. That's where this union is going to take place. First of all, where our feelings literally heal our 
thoughts and vice versa. So there's an interchange. They're showing that to me as that's where we get the um, eternity symbol sign. That's quite a much a part of many people's symbols that they're shown along the way on the twin flame journey. So the thoughts and the feelings represent literally the divine feminine and divine masculine interchange. Yes, so I'm just going to turn over because from here we've got a list of things that I was given as a self-care package, which is a really amazing tool to have. And I will try and maybe write this up and post it in some way. Those of you that might follow me on Facebook, I probably should put my link. I don't do a lot of Facebook. I'm really sorry. I'm not, I don't have enough time, honestly, in my life to write blogs and um, post things and yeah, I would love to though. I would love to. That would be great if I could have this as a full-time job. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> but one must pay bills as well. And I do enjoy this. But anyway, here's your list, guys. So the first one is self-love. Obviously, we always come to that. Whenever we're kind of struggling, not sure what to do next, we're on a spiritual journey, come back into self-love. In the situation that you're experiencing the distress or upset, what would it take if I just loved myself 1% more in this situation? What would that look like? A lot of us don't even know how to access self-love. It might be that you have to respect yourself a little bit more. It might be that you actually have to put a boundary in or you have to say no to something. You actually have to take the time and listen to yourself. The next one, number two, is self-acceptance. And especially with those emotions that are coming through where we get a secondary trauma, which is shaming the emotion that's coming with the trauma that we've experienced. So now we're not allowed to feel upset or angry or feel like we're losing our mind because of what we've been through. Okay. So we need to really release that shame and that guilt and accept our emotions, accept ourselves in our worst state. This is a radical form. This is radical self-love, radical self-acceptance, accepting yourself in your worst state. And so the next bit is when we get to that part, which can be really a hard part for a lot of people, we need to ask for help. We need to remember to ask, our, ask for help and call out and ask for uh, various whatever works for you, higher powers, energies, um, ancestors, spirit guides, protectors, Whatever you need, you call that in and you ask for help, okay? And you communicate via what may feel at first like your imagination. Open up your imagination. Even if it, to begin with it feels like imagination, when you're connecting, it doesn't matter. You have to kind of fake it till you make it. You've got to create that energy as if that is the energy. So I'm going to talk about a little bit more about the spiritual things that you can ask for, but just a few more other important kind of more human things we're going to talk about uh, forgiveness forgiveness of yourself because the shame also comes in as you've done something wrong you're bad you're a bad person because you've been told you're bad right so you're just always feeling bad no matter what you feel bad so if you feel bad you also need to accept and forgive yourself because you need to forgive yourself because you did not know what you were doing and that's one of the actual things in the bible forgive those that they do not know what they do because at those times we were actually unconscious and we hadn't worked all this shit out yet and this is our awakening moment where we are waking up and seeing what we did some of it was wrong but we didn't again realize at the time so we also then need to move into acceptance and forgiveness of others as well but that is quite you know you've got to get there first don't jump to that this is a little bit of an order it is in, in some kind of order that I'm saying these things um, so if we can't accept things, sometimes we just need to let them go. Sometimes things can't be accepted because it was real shit what happened. And that's fine. And in my case, yes, that is a situation. Um, um, I'll leave it there. So <laughs> we are going to let that go. We're going to let that go. And what that means is letting go of that person's situation. It means you don't have any contact with them anymore. If it's a person, you really limit the contact with them because them being in your lives is not a healthy thing for you. And so that's where you let go. And that's where you let go of feeling resentment and anger towards that person ongoing because that's also not good for you. That's the poison that you keep inside of you that they put in there in the first place and then you let it continue and allow it. But you didn't know. Now you know, you can get rid of it. It's a purge, it's a letting go. It might require some kind of ceremonial thing like lighting a fire or going out and at sea, burning something out there and 
let putting away the ashes in the sea, doing a prayer. Again, there's some tools that can go with that as well um, that I'll talk about from the spiritual realm. Another more human thing to do is once we feel like we're lightening things up and we can feel a little bit more you know, comfortable, we go into joy and gratitude. So if we can go into joy and gratitude, it means you can see, wow, I have a good life. Shit, I'm lucky. Look where I live. Look at my house. Look at this place. Look at that. Look at who I'm with. I'm so lucky to have this, you know, situation. A lot of people worse off than me. I'm actually really grateful. Instead of being down on myself and telling myself, you should be better. You're not good enough. Now you can see, actually, you are good enough. You have done well. You have... Um, you've got this appreciation of yourself and you acknowledge yourself. You're grateful for, to yourself for things that you've done for you. Yeah. So then we've got some a little bit more practical human things that we can do. We can be so going into nature, being around nature. If you're struggling at the moment, try and get into nature. Feet or uh, shoes off, feet on the ground if you can, if it's not too cold. Going for walks and exercise, dancing, writing, music, art, all of these forms of, you know, energy are really good to be in. Like they're really good to focus into that good, hopeful energy. Um, if you're, you've got a passion that you do, you love being, try and be in that as well. And then spend more time doing the things that you love to do. Less of the type things that you don't make you feel good. Yeah. That's creating those boundaries. That's a, probably should put that in there somewhere actually. Boundaries. After letting go. Um, and somewhere around gratitude, we need to put in boundaries around ourselves. So that brings me nicely into some of the spiritual things that we can do and ask for. So boundaries, I would translate that, that as being like asking for a protective shield. I always ask my Archangel Michael to do these things. He's pretty legendary when it comes to spiritual protection. As soon as you ask Archangel Michael to come in and protect you if you feel, feel spiritually unsafe, He's the your guy, you know, he's like the spiritual security guard. He has the security force in the spiritual realm ready to go. He sends out his team. He removes negative energies. Um, he isolates them and puts them into their own form of kind of healing in a way. You could say spiritual jail for some of them. This is so funny, but okay, it's different there because they do get a lot of healing. Um, so... Oh, where was I going there? Goodness gracious. Yes, that is Archangel Michael. He can wrap around a shield of blue sort of or silver light around you, keep you safe, shield you from any anything going on there. So then we also have just good old energy of white light. Anytime you just instantly need a little bit of healing throughout the day, a little bit of an energy burst. Maybe even instead of thinking, I need a coffee, get out of your head for a bit, do a five-minute meditation bring in the light, bring in whatever color you want, use color therapy, you can start with white light and you can go from there, whatever, send that energy into those places in your body where you might feel um, heavy or uptight or um, uncomfortable. We've also got the violet flame, that's another beautiful color healing energy from Saint Germain, um, just bringing in that transmutation, it's a real transmutation one, so if you're feeling you have something really, really stuck, Violet flame is a very good one that breaks down any really stuck blocked energy. So if you've really got something that doesn't seem to be going away with the usual one, it's kind of like I would say, we have a substance in New Zealand and it's called methylated spirits. It's it's a purple fluid and it's kind of, it, it washes away paint and things like that. But anyway, that's always what I think of when I, um, it's such a really purpley violet colour. I always think of methylated spirits and it is kind of like a cleaner of some kind. So it also really does a deep cleanse. Um, yeah, so use that violet flame. You've also got Archangel Michael. Another really good thing he does is do cord cutting. So where you've got, you, you really at this point are needing to start to cut off toxic people and situations out of your life. Um, you, there is a period where you have to do a really big cull. You've got a lot of leeches, you know, at times that come and hang off you and drain you and just bring you back into that toxic energy. Um, you really, when anyone where you're feeling that that's happening, cut them off. No prisoners, no, you know, you've just got to be ruthless around this time when you are healing. Um, cosmic vacuum is a tool that I use to suck off things that might need an extra suck or it's just like another kind of cleanse, cleansing tool. 
maybe an energy bath of some kind if you're really feeling you need to rest and you just really want to receive a lovely energy it's just a matter of sending out an intention in your mind that you would like an energy bath and you just lay down and allow your team of healers um, to come in and and ship and help with your energy um, obviously be, doing meditation and being in a state of calm as much as you can breathing um, is an optimum kind of state to be in where you can try and calm down your central nervous system to a point where you feel can feel relaxed that's going to be really important using the white light there down your spinal column bringing it in relaxing okay I was to try and kind of talk about in this way to in my videos towards the end we're trying to re really pull us into that lovely calming energy where we can be um, remembering we need good sleep um, and we need a lot of relaxation uh, maybe we need to look into things such as the polyvagal therapy there's a lot around that at the moment um, to do with the vagus nerve and the psoas muscle uh, there's a lot of kind of physical therapy around these two kind of parts of our body so we come back around we're, we're realizing that it's mind body emotion spirit everything we're, we're intertwining here we're doing everything's connected it started in energy if a belief has gone on for a long long time it comes eventually into our physical body and that's where we need to heal it so however everything does come from energy so if you can organize yourself in the energetic field to see where the thing is that's connected to your physical pain energetically if you cut that off that is cutting it off at the source so get to that place too where if you realize there's a connection okay this is great thank you so much for listening everyone oh i realize this has been quite a long video i do apologize but i did have a lot of information thank you so much if you've listened this far i really appreciate you guys um support and following me and subscribing and liking and commenting if you like and let me know what you're up to um, i hope that i can spend a little bit more time in the social media world and do more videos okay thanks everyone bye for now